I'm very happy here to be with Jens Stoltenberg. Uh, I think we actually met first when he was the Prime Minister of Norway. So it's always a pleasure to meet Jens, and we know we have a friend in him. Uh, he is, uh, of course, he's in Iceland now for the second term as Secretary General to NATO. And we've had a very good discussion today about various issues. Uh, I think it would be right to say that, at firstly, we talked about the Arctic. And I think we share the concerns that the Arctic has enjoyed an increased political interest with all the good and bad that follows an increased political interest. And of course, uh, our view here in Iceland is that the Arctic should stay a low tension zone. Uh, and we are very focused on that in our uh, chairmanship program, where we are focusing not least on the environment, but also on peaceful cooperation in the Arctic. Uh, we talked also about the issues concerning uh, nuclear disarmament. And I think it is only right to say that, of course, everybody is worried about the fact that we're seeing an increased tension when it comes to nuclear uh, weaponry. But hopefully, hopefully, we will, uh, there will be found some solutions when it comes to that. And then um, we talked about hybrid threats. Uh, uh, area which is of growing concerns in all of our countries when we're talking about cybersecurity uh, and different sorts of threats to our security in the modern world. Now, uh, we are going to have a meeting after this press moment here with our National Security Council. Uh, and there we are not least going to talk about hybrid threats, uh, and but also environmental threats like climate change, food security, and other issues which uh, remind us of the broad spectrum when we're talking about security so uh, and how we really can protect our critical infrastructures and also our democratic institutions. Now, I don't think I will have this any longer, just hand the floor to you, Jens. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prime Minister Jakob Stotter. Dear Katrin, it's great to be back uh, in Iceland. I've been there many times before and I really feel at home for many reasons. Partly because uh, Iceland has always been very close to my own country, Norway, but also because Iceland is one of the founding uh, members of uh, NATO. And uh, the fact is that uh, despite uh, that uh, you don't have a defense budget, you are actually contributing to our shared security uh, in many different uh, ways. And in NATO, we highly value the Icelandic uh, contributions to our shared uh, security. Your strategic location uh, in the Atlantic uh, helps to bind North America and, uh, and Europe uh, together, which is the main purpose of NATO, is to keep North America and Europe uh, together. Uh, second, you help us uh, with maritime and air surveillance in the North Atlantic. This morning I visited uh, the Keflavik Air Base. I met the personnel and I uh, spoke with them and they updated me on the important work you help us to do uh, from uh, the Keflavik uh, base. And then uh, we are grateful for your contributions to different uh, NATO missions and operations. Your contributions are uh, civilian, uh, but they are highly valued uh, in our training mission in Afghanistan, in, uh, in Iraq, in Kosovo. And uh, uh, we also uh, thank you for uh, the help you provide when it comes to working with partners like Georgia uh, and, uh, and Jordan. Uh, so you contribute uh, a lot, and uh, my main message today is to thank you for your many contributions. Then you have played a lead role uh, on women, peace and security. We know that uh, uh, it is extremely important to uh, include uh, also women more in our efforts, both when it comes to what we do at the NATO headquarters, but also in NATO missions and operations. It is important to uh, make sure that we do them in a way which protect uh, women, which we know are or who are uh, always uh, among the most vulnerable uh, in an armed uh, conflict. And then you mentioned the different issues we discussed, uh, arms control, uh, where Iceland has, has played a key role hosting the uh, Gorbachev-Reagan meeting back in the 80s. Now we see that the INF treaty that followed after that meeting, uh, that uh, the INF treaty that banned all uh, intermediate range weapons, now is in jeopardy, and uh, and we uh, because of uh, Russian violations of that treaty, and uh, and uh, we continue to call on Russia to come back into compliance with the INF uh, uh, treaty. 
Um, um, we also discussed the situation up in the high north. Uh, the message has always been that in, that in the high north uh, we have low tensions and we need to try to continue to work to maintain uh, low tensions in the high north, despite the fact that we see more presence, military presence, especially of Russian capabilities up here in the high uh, north. And then, of course, we need to adapt to the fact that we see more hybrid and cyber threats. Uh, and that's part of the uh, big adaptation of NATO, which is now taking place. And we will uh, address this continued adaptation of NATO uh, when we meet again uh, at the uh, leaders' meeting of uh, NATO in London in the beginning of uh, December. So, my message today is that we live in a more unpredictable world, in uh, uncertain and unpredictable times. We need strong multilateral institutions like NATO, and uh, Iceland is uh, contributing uh, to the strength of our alliance. So, thank you so much. And then we talked about the nationality of Leivr Eriksson, yeah. which actually created a security situation yeah. here on the second floor. Yeah. So I think that yeah. was actually the most hazardous yeah. topic we discussed. True. But thank you. Uh, there are a few minutes if you would like to have questions or interviews. Yes, I, I believe this is the first time that the Secretary of NATO meets Iceland Prime Minister in Iceland. This is actually against Iceland's memberships, membership of NATO. Has, it in, has that in any way affected your meeting or the discussions? Also, NATO is an alliance of 29 democracies, and in democracies there are different views and different uh, positions on many things, uh, also on uh, the issue of uh, NATO. Uh, and that's uh, nothing new. Uh, and for me, uh, different views, uh, discussions, uh, are not a sign of weakness, but actually a sign of strength. Uh, then, uh, what I know is that uh, uh, there are different views uh, within, um, among parties in uh, Iceland when it comes to NATO, but it is a strong majority in the Icelandic parliament, uh, and, uh, and the political platform for the government is supportive of uh, NATO, and that's what matters uh, for me as Secretary General of NATO. Let me also add that I have been Prime Minister in Norway in a government where we had a party that was against NATO. Uh, but we had a kind of parallel situation where we negotiated a political platform for the government and the platform was supportive of NATO and then uh, it didn't create any problems for Norway's position in NATO, the fact that all the parties were against. So the answer is no, it had not created any problems. It just reflects that there are different parties in democracies as we see in Iceland and in other NATO allied countries. You mentioned uh, cyber security, both of you. Now, of course, Iceland being a small state with limited capacities in defense, not only militarily, but also in the field of cyber security. What are uh, the future uh, proposals to actually somehow uh, uh, strengthen the capacity of uh, detecting, tracking, and uh, preventing these uh, cyber attacks? Actually, if we're doing this, could you go to the mic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just to begin with, I think hybrid threats are a growing concern in all international cooperation because we are sensing, because they are a very different threat to our security than the typical nation-state threat where we have a defined military. It's often very difficult to trace cyber threats where they're coming from, and they're not, not necessarily coming from nation-states. They might be coming from individuals or some organizations. But uh, I should think that they are receiving more attention now within NATO and other international organs that they, than we have seen before. Mm. So first of all, uh, I think that what we see now is that uh, NATO allies and NATO as an alliance are doing more than we have done ever before in responding to hybrid and cyber threats. Uh, at our summit uh, not many years ago, we decided that actually a cyber attack can trigger Article 5, meaning that a cyber attack can be as serious and as damaging as a conventional attack. Uh, uh, second, we have decided that we uh, must uh, strengthen our uh, cyber defenses, and we have done that over the last uh, years by uh, significantly uh, improving the systems, the methods, the way we address cyber threats, both when it comes to uh, what NATO allies do, but also what NATO as an alliance uh, does in protecting our networks. We have uh, developed or uh, we have established some teams that can be 
uh, deployed uh, quickly to allies which need help to protect their cyber networks. And thirdly, we are sharing best practices. We are exercising uh, more together. Uh, 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 and by doing that, we are increasing awareness and, and, and strengthening our ability to work together. The, the thing with cyber threats is that they are constantly evolving. So we need to mm -hmm. constantly change the way we are responding. And as um, uh, Kathleen's just said, I think one of the challenges with cyber threats is that attribution is always difficult uh, to, to decide who is behind because they can use uh, servers in other countries attacking us uh, and being government or non-government actors. Mm. So also everything we do when it comes to intelligence, uh, surveillance, improving our, uh, our abilities to monitor and to understand who is attacking us is also part of our response to cyber threats. But it's a very big challenge because if we want to embrace all the opportunities that come with the fourth industrial revolutions, we're also actually mm. experiencing a very different set of threats to our infrastructure, for example. Okay, we have time for one last question because now we're starting another meeting in four minutes. <laughs> okay, you see Mr. Atle bara softer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Thank you very much. the match tonight, Iceland or Turkey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, two NATO allies, it's not for me to... <laughs> Iceland yeah. will win that match, <laughs> but of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.